This is Callum Crowell and welcome to Kick Talk Reboot. It is match day three of the Ardak Cup and we have reports from both Largsasso versus Kawinning Rangers. And joining us today is Ayrshire Weekly Press sports reporter Stuart McConnell who will be providing a report from Silkwoods Vix versus Oven Meadow. We also have reaction from junior football pundit Drew Cochran to today's matches and we look forward to match day four on Wednesday evening. But now on to the classified results. Arda Glass, League Cup Section 1. The Rythus 1, Winton Rovers 5. Kobani Lightside 3, Beath Juniors 2. Lark Sissel 4, Co-Winning Rangers 0. League Cup Section 2. Davo Juniors 2. Ardia Thistle 2, Silkwoods Vix 0, Oven Meadow 4, League Cup Section 3, Craig Mark 3, and Bank United 4, Whitlitz 0, Trun 2, Mabel 3, Govan 0, League Cup Section 4, Cumnock Juniors 1, Luga Boswell Thistle 1, Kello Rovers 0, Glenafton Athletic 1. Welcome to a blustery Barfields Park where the score in the Ardagh Cup was Largs so 4, Co-winning Rangers 0. Largs had a resounding finish to this match um, to comfortably route Co-winning in the end, including a spectacular free kick from inside their own half, but it didn't actually start that way for the Barfields men. In the opening moment after kick-off, Largs got into a real pickle. Buffs broke forward, caught Largs in possession and Ben Lewis fired in a 20-yard effort which was smothered by Grant Weir um, though he did drop it and then caught it the second attempt. Then Lewis was again three moments later but scuffed his shot wide of target. Largs, while on the back foot for that opening 20 minutes, were determined to keep playing the ball out of defence and Thistle scored the opener on the 20-minute mark as skipper's Kevin Strella's corner um, was cleared out and waiting on the right hand side was Ewan Lindsay and he hit a stylish low diagonal strike from 18 yards into the bottom left hand corner but it was Nicky Jimison um, signed from Morton who came to Thistle's rescue and prevented what appeared a certain equaliser Bruce McMaster raced on through on the right hand side chipped the out rushing keeper Weir um, but the 18 year old defender darted back and volleyed it to safety then James Marks for Lags was denied by the offside flag as he knocked a, an effort by Buffs keeper Fraser Stewart into the net. So it was a narrow lead for Lags at half time. But Thistle came out of firing on all cylinders after the break. And it was a young winger Frizzell who reacted well to a through ball from Ewan Lindsay on the right hand side. He shucked off a challenge before tucking the ball past Stewart. 2-0 Largs in 58 minutes and then Marks missed two good opportunities as Graham Muir nearly scored with a spectacular volley but Stuart pulled off an outstanding fingertip save for the Buffs. But Thistle were not to be denied and ex Morton and Cubnock defender Alan Gobride sent a cushioned header soaring into the top right hand corner of the net for a 3-0 lead on 75 minutes and Frizzell nipped in after a short back pass from Buffs and fired in a point blank effort which Stuart blocked with his chest but Largs finished off a resounding victory with a spectacular goal from defender Craig Little who had the foresight to spot Stuart off his line and lobbed the keeper from inside his own half with a huge free kick so the celebrations really began in earnest for Largs who defended well in that second half and kept the Buffs at bay because um, they were searching for consolation as for Largs, it was a much needed win after collecting one point from the opening two games of the section and sets them up well for the big clash at Winton on Wednesday night. So the final score at Barfields Park was Largs Thistle 4, co-winning Rangers 0. Well Drew, that was uh, a very convincing win for Largs 4-0 today. Yeah, I mean it, w it was very uh, emphatic with, with great goals as well. I mean Largs really looked impressive in the second half in particular against what is a very experienced co-winning team 
Well, I can tell you, in the first half, it was uh, very eeksy peeksy, and uh, in fact, Colony actually had a chance straight from kickoff. Uh, it was uh, Ben Lewis that was straight through and goal, and then uh, then uh, McMaster had a great chance for them as well, and it was cleared majestically um, off uh, just before the line uh, by Nicky Jimison, who's been has proved to be a real find for Largs, but. Uh, but like I say, Ewan Lindsay scored a great goal. It was a great opening goal. Connor kick comes in and he flashes it in. It was a great shot from outside the box. And then, like you say, the second half, they just they really kicked on from there. Uh, there was a really spectacular goal near the end, though, Drew, eh? Yeah, I mean, Craig Little will be having a few pints tonight to, on that one. I mean, the, the free kick from his own half. So what are you talking about? I mean, it must be... I mean, it's certainly well over 50 yards and... The keeper, Fraser Stewart, was off his line. Craig must have noticed that. And uh, as you said to me, it was um, Beckham-esque, that <laughs> one. In, in terms of uh, uh, though the set half, James Marks had a, 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 a number of opportunities as well in which to score. Uh, he got four last week, sadly none for him today. But the other guys helped out. Gilbride as well got a great goal. And you'll be happy that your man Frizzell also got in the score sheet. Yeah, a young Frizzell, a uh, kind of left winger, is a guy who looks like a player, he's fast, and when he got his chance, he kept his cool uh, and knocked it in. And you mentioned James Marks. I mean, James scored four last Saturday, and in the second half, he could have helped himself to a hat-trick. Um, really disappointing, though, from a winning point of view. They made, let's say, they were, they were good in the first half, they had a few chances, uh, um, but they really came undone in the second half, and they were even, there was a bit of uh, a few quarrels going on, and uh, what wasn't looking good for them, from their point of view? No, they were very frustrated, and I hadn't realised <laughs> until I saw them today how experienced they were. I mean, Stuart Wilson, Barry Fleeting, Chris McGowan, all along the back four, but Lars were really sharp. Um, I mean, Lars played the flanks really well today and had a lot of pace about them. Um, Co-winning, obviously, they want to get out of the Ayrshire district. And with the experience they have, you know, you'd be surprised if they didn't. Uh, they'll be certainly contending for promotion this year. Yeah. I, I expect to bounce back. It was just a bad afternoon, really, for them. But in saying that, um, the way Largs went about it, their manner and their attitude and their spirit looks look good. And that's that's been promising as well, because there was a setback losing to Cobunny the other night. And uh, the other thing as well, of course, is that you're looking towards... Um, this game in midweek, Winton Rovers. Now I believe Winton were last time we looked. I think Winton were building up quite a score. I think they were falling up at the rye. So it's going to be a, a huge match between Largs and Winton, and it's at a draw on Wednesday night. Yeah, it's a grudge match because that was Chris Strain Junior losing today, and now it's the turn of Chris Strain Senior, Winton Rovers manager, eh, to try and get revenge. But if Largs knock it about like they did today, um, you know you'd fancy them to. Being the running to get into the quarterfinals of this tournament. Now, I believe I'm just checking at the moment, Drew. But um, Beath were two 0 up against Coburnley, and they were losing three um, two. And and again, which is traditionally quite a quite a grudge match. Well, you always expect that Coburnley Beath, and you just hope that there's no trouble up there. If Coburnley held on to win three two, obviously. Uh, I mean, it's almost certain that they would qualify. So then it's a case of if if Largs can uh, not give away points because they're ahead of Beath, if that's the situation. And uh, up in Meadow as well, they were looked like they were racking. They were three and up at Silcoats as well in the other group. Yeah, well, you're looking at Meadow and Harrowford, aren't you? Uh, it's almost a, a shoe in. You would have thought. Um, and you always look to Ochenleck and Cumnock, although um, with Glen Afton buying in players, um, you've got the Holy Trinity down there again, you know, Glen Afton, Cumnock, Ochenleck, knocking spots off each other. Yeah, OK, well, that's great, Drew. Thanks very much. Thank you. And now we move across to Oven Times and Adrossan Selkirk's Herald Sports reporter, Stuart McConnell, with his take on the Selkirk's Victoria versus Oven Meadow match. Welcome to Camel Park where the final score in this Arda Class League Cup sectional match was Selkirk's Victoria 0, Irvine Meadow 4. Uh, former winners Meadow um, ultimately won comfortably against the uh, uh, unfancied Seasiders. However, um, 
they were unconvincing at times and that, well, it must be said are a work in progress with Stevie Rankin making so many changes to the Irvine side this season. And they got off to the almost perfect start in just four minutes when new signing from Cumbernauld Paul McLaughlin uh, shot home from 80 yards after a superb pass from um, Robert Halliday. Um, after that they continued to dominate and then uh, they made it 2-0 and uh, they doubled their advantage in 16 minutes when uh, Ryan Deese and Paul Maxwell combined with um, McLaughlin to, to hammer the ball foam from 8 yards. Um, after this Vicks came more into the game and uh, Blair Gilmer heading the ball over the bar in 28 minutes and then uh, uh, Chris Black having a shot blocked by a, a Meadow defender in 36 minutes. Black, a, a young striker who's, uh, with good prospects, has joined the Seasiders this season. In fact, then a black shot from 12 yards has spun across the face of goal in 40 minutes as uh, the Seasiders tried to come back into the match. Um, and then just Black had a shot uh, saved by uh, the Meadow goalie just before half time. Um, second half saw Meadow uh, kind of upping that, the ante again and uh, Ryan D then their 20 yard chip which just went over the bar in 48 minutes uh, and then McLaughlin uh, shot well wide from 52 minutes when uh, you know, frankly scoring looked easier uh, D then had a shot from 12 yards well saved by the, the, the Vicks goalie Jim Catterson um, however um, and on the air um, the Irvine side Swept into a 3-0 lead and it was a great pass from uh, Robert Halliday uh, and he found uh, Ryan McCann uh, to round the keeper and shoot home um, from 8 yards uh, so we're comfortable at this stage. Uh, McCann then had a, a shot which hit both posts before being scrambled away uh, by a Vicks defender and um, they were just about a minute from time Meadow sort of put, set the seal in what was a, a really a routine win um, as it was a, a nice finish from a striker from last season, Paul Maxwell. Uh, he shot home from eight yards um, and that was uh, after it had been set up by, by Chris Hall so um, that was really, that's where it was so Meadow look uh, more than likely to progress to the quarter finals. Uh, Hurlford, of course, play Irvine Vicks. We'll see how that goes on Monday um, in terms of winning the section. Uh, but you know, from Campbell Park, where the final score in this Arda Glass League Cup match was so good, Vix nil, Irvine Meadow four. This is Stuart McConnell for Kick Talk. Thanks very much for that, Stuart. And now for some highlights from today's matches. Last season's Scottish Junior Cup winners, Hulford United, had to fight back from 2-1 down in the Scottish Senior Cup to secure a replay against Edinburgh University. Angus Cochran had opened the scoring for Ford on 16 minutes, but it finished 2 all, so that one is going to a replay. However, Auchinleck Talbot are comfortably into the second round after a 5-1 victory over St Cuthbert's. Now, we spoke to Drew Cochran earlier, and that was just after full time at the Largs winning game. Um, so it was, of course, Coburnie 3, Beath 2, and it finished the Rye 1, Winton 5, as you know from the classifieds. Ian Cashmore scored a hat-trick for Winton, and Ben Carson scored a double, including a penalty. Um, and on to section 1. It was Coburnie who topped the section with 7 points, with Largs in 2nd place on 4 points on goal difference. In second, in, sorry, in section 2, Oven Meadow lead the way with 9 points, while Hulford, with a game in hand on Monday against Oven Vicks, are in 2nd spot with 4 points. Now David Gillies scored both goals for Trin as they ran out 2-0 winners at Whitlitz and are in 2nd place in section 3 on 9 points with Mabel top in goal difference after their 3-0 win, with McGrady, Stevenson and Cumming on the score sheet in their 3-0 victory over Govan. And in section 4, Glenafton lead the section with 7 points, and Auchinleck are in 6 points, but with a game in hand on Monday night against Muirkirk. So that's it from Kick Talk Reboot this evening. We will be back on Wednesday evening after match day four. Thanks very much for joining us and I'm Callum Corral. Goodbye.